Hello everyone, uh, thank you all for being here. It is 7.15 p.m. in Poland, it should be 6.15 in London, and I believe it's quarter past one in Eastern Standard Time in the US. So thanks all for being here. Do drop a one in the chat to let me know that my audio is coming through correctly, please. So far, everything looks good. Yeah, so let's see, we have XYZ, thank you very much. We have Sonic, Villainous, welcome Villainous, thank you for being here. Harriel Johnson, Yeshua is Yahweh, um, and then Horse, of course. So thank you all. <laughs> Abdul Masi, yeah, I've seen your message. I've done a little bit of work on um, Julian Huxley. So yeah, I'll add that in. But this is probably going to be three or four parts. It's, I doubt it'll just be one um, because I've, I'm, I'm only just finishing part one, but there's still quite a bit to go. And Facts of the Feelings, welcome. And um, yeah, Kitty A. Eleison, thanks all. Yeah, so there's going to be quite a bit of work here, but once again, the aim is to show that this is, you'll see there's an anti-Christian enterprise operating once more. It's not just about science. It's not about research. No, it's ultimately at root, there is a, a series of links to very toxic anti-Christian thought, anti-Christian activity. So, yeah, let's hope that I can present facts, present the case. And it's coherent, it's factual, it is supported by evidence. And yeah, also this is the first time I'm running through this. So obviously the aim of a preview is for me to one, present it, two, check the, I want to just see the audience reaction, see the flow, see if I've missed anything, added too much detail, too little detail, and so on. So the structure, the flow. So that's the whole point. Michelle, welcome, good to see you, thank you. Right, let's, uh, let's actually just dive into what I have. So remember the first time I run through, it's not necessarily the smoothest. I haven't necessarily ordered the slides as I should. That's the point of doing this, but I also want to introduce you to the work that I'm currently doing uh, amongst other things. Right, let's jump over here. So for instance, uh, I've mentioned this last maybe one year ago. CBS News, Darwin Letter reveals, I do not believe in the Bible because there has been a long effort, like along with Hitler, atheists definitely don't want to claim anything that may be embarrassing to the atheist movement, to the atheist ethic or ethos or, you know, so on. They don't want, they want to distance themselves. All of those things, no, no, suddenly they're not real atheists, so they weren't atheists, so there was something else, right? However, we'll start to see that, that it would seem that Darwin rejected God, and it would seem that the Nazis were very, very much ultra-Darwinists. And we've already seen evidence that Hitler was very much a materialist and very likely an atheist, despite all the occult goings on. So I know there's the claim to try and paint him as a Catholic, but no, the, obviously we know that that is untrue. So, <clears throat> yeah. Right, let me, let me jump into the slides. So we've got this. Darwin Letter reveals, I do not believe in the Bible because there's so much controversy around that. Right. Let's start here. Atheism, Darwin and the Third Reich. We'll be discussing more than atheism just alone. We'll be doing more than Darwin. But ultimately, we lead to the Third Reich. And of course, atheism is mixed in it. Right. This is not one of the first slides, but I decided to put this in the beginning because um, it, it's relevant. It sets it's a tone for this, at least. For When I do a full series, then great, I'll get to that. But right now, it gives us a tone as to where we're going. This is Charles Darwin in The Descent. Just Janice, welcome. Charles Darwin in The Descent of Man. And he says here, at some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. So what you have is the civilized races. Now, by what standard civilized? And I think we can have very likely objective standards for that. Is quality bad only for me? Um, Phil Talk, if you want to debate me, I'm an atheist. You're grossly misunderstanding what atheism is, bracketing the fact you don't have good arguments against it. Uh, I've done several series on atheism as a religion, historically. Atheism is tied, historically, when you go to Greece, it is tied to the uh, sophists. It's tied to pagan ideas. Then when you go to the French Revolution, then you go to the middle of the 18th century, you're looking at atheism tied to socialism, atheism in the 19th century to Marxism, atheists being integral to the violence, the genocide that happened in the 20th century. So, yeah. Okay. So at some future period, not very distant, 
as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate. It didn't take centuries, right? 14 years later, the first genocide of the, <laughs> the first genocide effectively occurred, right? So ideas have consequences, and these ideas, this replacement, shall we say, of morals, led to a great deal of violence based on scientific racism. Right. Have you been through my videos? Have you looked at the content within my videos? Right. Atheism is, is responsible for huge amounts of death. Atheism is responsible when in power for hundreds of millions of deaths in the 20th century. More than the previous 1900 years combined. So, atheists, when you look at the atheist thinkers, they were all of them immoral men, horrible people. So, and they all decided in their writings somehow that atheism was a religious movement. Yeah. Okay. So, let's have a look at this, right? So, this, this, this tells us that his idea was, so, in terms of social Darwinism, you've got Athe sorry, you've got these civilized people who are going to exterminate, who are going to murder, who are going to kill the uncivilized, all right? So this is Charles Darwin. So I'm going to go through a series of pictures. Have a look at these, all right? Have a look at this man's eyes, and I want you to look at his face, and I want you to see what you see in his face, because I think this is an incredibly haunted man. So have a look at that face. Does this look like someone who is happy? Have a look at this picture. Does this look like a man who is happy, fulfilled, or a man who has demons, a man who's, who's looking at ghosts? This looks like someone who is dead inside. Yeah, it's never real atheism, of course. Have a look at that. This is a man with a thousand yard stare. This is, this is again a man who is dead inside. Have a look at this one, okay? Again, this is a man who is lost somewhere in his own mind. Again, look at look at the, the eyes here. Just look at the, the, the grief, the sadness. And then this is the last photo before he died. Look at that. I mean this is this is haunting. Right. So a man without a soul. That's Luis Manuel Lopez. Yeah, there's something there's something there in the face. At least that's what this tells me. So Darwinism, devaluing human life. Darwinism and death. Devaluing Human Life in Germany, 1859 to 1920. So the discussion about the significance of social Darwinism has special importance, right? Miserable as sin, correct? That's just Janus, yeah. So the discussion about the significance of social Darwinism has special importance because it is background to discussions of Hitler's ideology, the roots of German imperialism, and World War I, right? Hitler was a social Darwinist. He was a rabid social Darwinist. Yeah, so facts over feelings, the absolute emptiness in his face is astonishing, right? So Hitler was a social Darwinist. He viewed history as a fight for existence amongst unequal races. All Hitler scholars agree on this point, and it is too obvious to deny when one reads Mein Kampf. Um, they didn't look at the photo because some took too long to take. That, that is true, but I just think there's this element of emptiness in his eyes, like this this grief, this sadness, this, this a dead man, right? Inside, Charles looks deeply disturbed. This is what a soul without Christ looks like. Yeah. Um, he was not a happy man, a haunted Darwin. Yeah. Okay. So we need to understand this idea of a fight for existence. Charles Darwin's words that we just quoted earlier talks about this fight, the extermination, right? And Hitler echoes these words, but then we've got people prior and we've got people in between that have the same ideas. And we've got to see what idea, what is the source of this idea? Where does it come from? Right. And what was Darwin echoing or legitimizing? Because it seems that Darwin legitimized certain ideas that came before him. Right. So Darwinism impacted thinking about the value of human life and the significance of human death. The question we should ask is, are there precursors to his thought? Now, prominent German Darwinists urged their society to reevaluate its stance on what today is known as biomedical ethics because they were recommending things like infanticide, euthanasia, suicide and abortion. The killing of babies, right? They were, this is post-birth abortions, right? Leading Darwinists, many who were atheists, right? Or by almost by definition, atheists, 
invoked Darwinian science to undermine traditional Judeo-Christian ethical values. So, atheists are not Darwinists. So, this is from Oxford Academic, Biology and Ideology, from Descartes to Dawkins. The ideological uses of evolutionary biology in recent atheist apologetics. During the first few years of the 21st century, a number of high-profile populist books offering an aggressively atheist critique of religion appeared. This clustering of prominent works of atheist apologetics may be attributed to the fact that developments in biology, especially evolutionary biology, have profound negative implications for belief in God. Richard Dawkins, The God Delusion, and Daniel Dennett's Breaking the Spell, both published in 2006, argue that the Darwinian theory of evolution erodes many traditional metaphysical notions, such as belief in God through its universal acid. So yesterday, of course, we had an atheist saying that, well, you know, really, atheists are not Darwinists, and Darwinists are not atheists, and atheists don't appeal to Darwinism, and so we asked, like, so what do you appeal to? And he was like, well, um, blah, 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 and he disappeared, right? So, let's see, having a similar appearance, though. Yeah. Okay, so there's this reliance on Darwin. Now, Darwinism has been transposed in recent atheist apologetics from a provisional scientific theory to an anti-theistic ideology. So that's the author of this paper, right, stating that Darwinism has become an anti-theistic ideology. In particular, it considers the ideological use of the biological sciences, especially evolutionary biology, in recent atheist apologetics, which tells us that Darwinism is utilized as a club to attack religion, right, to enforce the atheist religion. Right. So, design in nature was replaced by Darwin. Now, prior to Darwin, what you had was William Paley and natural theology. So, this is natural theology or evidences of the existence and attitudes or attributes, sorry, of the deity collected by the appearance of nature. Right, let's talk about that. So Darwin writes, I found it more and more difficult with free scope given to my imagination to invent evidence which would suffice to convince me. This means the, the convince me that design, that God designed the universe because he knew William Paley, right? And this idea was what was current at the time. And then Darwin says, no, sorry, Darwin says, given to my imagination to invent evidence which would suffice to convince me. And thus, disbelief crept over me at a very slow rate, but was at last complete. So disbelief crept over him. In other words, atheism, the lack of belief in God, right, crept over him, and at last it was complete. So it looks like we're starting to solve the mystery of was he a believer, was he blah, what, he was an atheist, right? Although I did not think much about the existence of a personal God, until a considerably later period in my life, I will here give the vague conclusions to which I have been driven. So what are the conclusions to which he has been driven? He says, the old argument from design in nature as given by Paley, which formerly seemed to me so conclusive, fails. Now that the law of natural selection has been discovered. So the idea of design, that God designed the world, fails. He rejects that idea. Now he says there's a purely natural, materialistic answer to this question. He has answered it. He has replaced God, effectively. That's Charles Darwin, autobiography, right? Now, the argument from design has been used for millennia, but it is most commonly associated with the 19th century English theologian William Paley and his 1802 treatise on natural theology, right? Let me just get a note that I want to discuss here. For instance, he says, every manifestation of design, that design must have had a designer, that designer must have been a person, and that person is God. So that's the quote by Paley. Actually, let me get that for you so I can just show it on the screen. Nope, I can't do that right now. Uh, let me see if I can get a different source for that. So I can just put it on the screen. Uh. And of course, I've got Typical. So, every manifestation of design is from a designer, and that designer was God. All right, hopefully that's clear. Right, so next time I know, put that quote up in advance. Now, Darwin had a wife called Emma. So, disbelief was a motivator. Yes, it would seem to be a motivator, villainous, or adherence to Gnostic humanism. I don't know, but let's, let's look as we go. Darwin's wife, Emma, was a devout Christian. She was upset by Darwin's lack of faith. 
She wanted to be with him beyond till death us do part. She knew her husband had doubts and worried that his scientific investigation would deepen his doubt, condemning her to an eternity alone, that he would go to hell, basically, that he would not go to heaven, and therefore she would be without him in heaven, because that's what she wanted. And she told him this, according to biographers. Right. Now, April 23, 1851, Annie Darwin, Darwin's daughter, dies. So their beloved oldest daughter, Annie, died just after turning 10. Darwin was so overcome with grief that he could not go to her burial. Okay, tell me, who is that Full Talk guy? I've never seen him before, so who is that? I mean, I've done work on history. I talk about history. So, I mean, does he have an issue with my history? Right? Has, can he prove that my history is wrong? The quotes I've made are incorrect from atheists. Darwin was so overcome with grief that he could not go to her burial, biographers wrote. However, then other biographers say that he went to the funeral, and then some say he gave a eulogy at the funeral. However, then you look at some who don't say he gave a eulogy, but he wrote a speech. So I've read the speech, but I don't know whether he delivered it as a eulogy. So, so that's an unclear area I still got to work on. But I've actually read the speech that he made. And his death changed things between Charles and Emma, says historian Deborah Heiligman. Darwin became more willing to proclaim his theories and spoke of his religious doubts. Now, it's only in the last few years that thousands of pages of Darwin's writings have been made public, over 9,000 pages in the last few years. So this information you're looking from 2015 onwards. So this is a lot of it's new. I feel like the death of Annie was so much the worst thing that could happen to them and they survived it, that it was almost like anything else paled in comparison. So he really, a lack belief, yeah, exactly. So he really got hit hard by his daughter's death and this seemed to affect these beliefs. They undermine his belief in God. He was probably very angry with God. My sound is off. Testing. My, I should have sound. Right. So, eight years later, Darwin publishes on the origin of species. Biographer Leander Haupt says you can see the influence of Annie's death in the shaping of that book. He knew so deeply and so personally and viscerally what death was now after Annie's loss, Haupt says. And in his writing, you see him affirming over and over the circle, the endless unfolding of life. In the last pages of On the Origin of Species, some say that Darwin confronts the meaning of Annie's demise. He takes his readers to a beautiful forest, rich with trees and birds singing everywhere, and reminds us of the beauty that we see every day in things like butterflies and flowers. And he demonstrates that humans who can contemplate and love these things are all products of millions of years of competition, struggle, famine, and death, and that this struggle will continue. So life will keep evolving new forms and new shapes. Maybe he's trying to rationalize her death. Maybe he thinks he's angry at God that she died unnecessarily. Oh, so thanks, only love. Right. Darwin is stating what we now call the existential dilemma, says Gopnik in his biography. He's saying there are two things that are true. One is that everything dies and things die for no reason and for no apparent end and their death is painful. So his wife, according to one discussion, had belief so she could rationalize her death as her daughter goes to heaven, right? Because she had she had the church to fall back on, her faith in God, the faith in the resurrection. However, Darwin did not, and therefore he had no way to deal with the grief, right? Phil Talk is Danny. Okay, Danny Phil Talk. Okay, I don't know who that is, but fine. And their death is painful, and that process of living and dying produces something amazing, beautiful, and astonishing. Now, Darwin writes, there's grandeur in this view of life. From so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved. Okay, and then things get really dark and ugly after that. Darwin's letter reveals, I do not believe in the Bible. So this is a recent publication, roughly 2015, right? Um, so he says here, he gets asked by this guy Darwin's latest reply to a young barrister named Francis McDermott, who wrote in 1880 with an unusual re request. Give me a yes or no to the question, do you believe in the New Testament? And he promises not to publicize Darwin's reply. Darwin says, Dear Sir, I am sorry to have to inform you that I do not believe in the Bible, right? And therefore, I do not believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. That would mean he's clearly Catholic, I would say. He doesn't believe in the Bible, right? He doesn't believe the Bible is a divine revelation, and he does not believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. That is clearly, he's, he's probably Mexican Catholic, I'm sure, okay? Possibly Calvinist, but you tell me. And he writes to someone else, Edward Aveling, right? There's a story with Edward, Edward Aveling coming up later. 
It has been always to my object to avoid writing on religion, and I have confined myself to science. He's a Jesuit. Sorry, thanks, Villains. You explained that now. Maybe a Buddhist. Who knows? So, he did not want to discuss religion, and so after the death of his daughter, he took a very negative turn on religion, so it seems he decided to embrace materialism. All right. So, Darwinism is integral to atheism. Okay, Darwinism as Darwinism as religion, what literature tells us about evolution, and that's by Michael Roos. Michael Roos is a very well-known scholar and a very well-known atheist scholar. Darwinism is a religion and has always been one. So says distinguished atheist philosopher Michael Roos, whose 2016 book Darwinism as Religion proposes that evolutionary theory is no mere explanation for our planet's biology, but a worldview that exceeds the warrant of science. Uh, thanks, XYZ, for the message. I'll have to look at it after the talk. So, for the past 150 years, Roos claims evolutionary thinking generally and Darwinian thinking in particular has taken on the form and role of a religion. So, it is the creation myth without God. However, Darwin never wrote on the origin of life. He wrote on the origin of species. Basically, wave your hand, blah, 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 mumble a few things, and there's life, and now let's explain what happened after life was made, but we don't have an explanation for how life was made. Do understand the distinction. He writes, Darwinian theory has served as a rival to the Christian worldview since the mid-Victorian period. In the way that evolution tries to speak of the nature of humans and their place in the scheme of things, we have a religion, a, re a secular religious perspective. So it's a secular religion. This is the, these are the words from the writings of Michael Roos. Right? Now we go to Oxford Academic and the book The Evolution of Atheism, The Politics of a Modern Movement, Politics of a Modern Movement by Stephen Ledru. So, in his book, he identifies two major streams of atheist thought that emerged in the 19th century. Scientific atheism, which he said is grounded in the natural, scientists, science, natural sciences and Darwinism. And humanistic atheism, which arose from social sciences, most importantly, Marx. Now, Marx was a humanist. A lot of these, a lot of these Marxists right, that came after Marx were humanists. However, don't forget, Marx and Engels, Marx and um, Lenin were all scientific communists. They were scientific atheists first, right? So atheists love to call themselves scientific atheists. They practice scientific atheism. That's a Marxist term, right? And also atheist apologetics is basically verbatim what the communists, what the Soviets, what Marx, Lenin, Engels, and Stalin said themselves, right? Hi, watching from Kenya, I have to say Darwin wasn't so evolved. Yeah, hi, Masa, <laughs> nicely said. A Christianese religion of the religion of man. What is the <laughs> uh, answer the question, Villainous? Please just just do, do not leave us in suspense. Please type the answer because I want to know too. Right. So you've got scientific atheism grounded in Darwinism. So yesterday this atheist was like, well, Darwinism and atheism are not really the same thing, and that doesn't mean blah. Whatever. Okay. It's clear there's a link here. And these two forms of atheism, he says, were attached to distinct political projects. They were used for political aims, the destruction of religion for political aims. Hmm, does that sound familiar at all? Right, now Dawkins, always Richard Dawkins. Hey, Chloe. Richard Dawkins is a vocal atheist with about 15 books, most related to proving Darwin's theory of evolution, debunking religious belief in a creator God. And he says, I think a case can be made that faith is one of the world's great evils, comparable to the smallpox virus, but harder to eradicate. Thanks, Richard. From his works, accepting this theory makes you independent from the belief in a creator. And his book, The Blind Watchmaker, says, an atheist before Darwin could have said, following Hume, I have no explanation for complex biological design. All I know is that God isn't a good explanation. So we must wait and hope that somebody comes up with a better one. I can't help feeling that such a position, though logically sound, would have left one feeling pretty unsatisfied. And that although atheism might have been logically tenable before Darwin, Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. So it looks like atheists require this creation myth, you know, of their, of their own. And this is what Darwin provided. But Darwin never wrote on the origin of life. Remember, he wrote on the origin of species. I mean, if I go here, if I try and let me just have a look here. The... I don't have it open right now, but yeah, he wrote On the Origin of Species. So he wrote, of course, the book The Descent of Man and the Origin of Species. 
Okay, don't have those open, but I will have them later. So, in the selfish gene, which is about a guy called Gene who is very selfish, he goes on to say that the understanding of evolution is the benchmark of the value of a society. So the understanding of evolution, the admitting that evolution is true, knowing that it is critically important, is the benchmark of the value of a given society. He says intelligent life on a planet comes of age when it first works out the reason of its own existence. If superior creatures from space ever visit Earth, the first question they will ask in order to assess the level of our civilization is, have they discovered evolution yet? So evolution is what distinguishes civilized man from those in the Jahiliya. You see, have you discovered Islam yet? If not, you're in the Jahiliya. So, right. Nothing to do with atheism. Never. So in the theological and scientific commentary on Darwin's Origin of Species by these two authors, Ted Peters and Martinez Hewlett, beginning in the late 19th century, a vigorous brand of atheism has used Darwin's model as ammunition in its attack on religious faith. Daniel Dennett believes that Darwin's idea of natural selection is the best idea that anyone has ever had ahead of Newton and Einstein and everyone else. That's on page 21. Darwin's dangerous idea, evolution and the meaning of life by Daniel Dennett. <coughs> uh, yes, we have to trust. We have faith in the science as we have to have trust the scientists because they're the gatekeepers of the sacred truth and knowledge. Yes, correct. Let me lay my cards on the table, Daniel says. If I were to give an award for the single best idea anyone has ever had, I'd give it to Darwin ahead of Newton and Einstein and everyone else. In a single stroke, the idea of evolution by natural selection unifies the realm of life, meaning and purpose, with the realm of space and time and cause and effect, mechanism and physical law. Hey, Ben Yosef, welcome. Unique friend, welcome. Darwin is the genesis for the atheist religion. Well, atheism as a religion really started just prior to the French Revolution in that period before the 1750s, right? Obviously, it's something atheists are not comfortable with, knowing that the, the founders of atheism saw it as a religion, and they, they've evolved cults to express themselves, right? Religious cults. So, yeah, it's, and it's, of course, it's integrally tied in with genocide and totalitarian government, right? So, now it seems that, that yes, it looks like atheism and Darwinism kind of do go together, but we knew that, just atheists don't. So, is it moral prejudice or morality? In his latest book, The Moral Landscape, How Science Can Determine Human Values, Sam Harris Harris, Sham Harris, shifts his sights to provide an evolutionary account of the origins of human morality. He possesses a sharp wit and an even sharper pen, and his attacks on mainstream religion had a scorched earth intensity. That's in a review from the New York Review of Books, as you can see here, the New York Review of Books discussing. So, an unobserved idea versus testable analysis. The idea wins, yes, because they like it. But a key Darwinian term is not defined. Darwinism supposedly explains how organisms became more fit to the environment, right? Or better adapted to the environment. But fitness is not and cannot be defined except in terms of existence. If you exist, clearly you fit. Nature made you, therefore you fit. If an animal exists, it is fit, otherwise it would not exist. It is not possible to specify all of the useful parts. And well, okay, like that fits, but the tail doesn't fit. The tail should have been one centimeter shorter, but the left leg fits because it's three inches longer. And okay, understand the fur is like half a half a mil too short and it's not whatever, right? The fact that it exists means it is fit. If an organism possesses features that appear on the surface to be as inconvenient as the peacock's tail or the top, ant top heavy antlers of a stag, the existence of stags and peacocks proves that these animals are, in fact, fit. Of course, Darwinists, atheists, scientists decided they looked at certain people and said, these people are not fit, they have to die. Nature made them, but these people decided, you know, we're the fit ones, we're killing those guys off. And these are atheists, right? So Darwinian theory is not falsifiable by any observation. Now, let's continue. Dawkins and Singer. Murder is okay. Richard Dawkins. Now, of course, at some point, I'll, I'll circle back to the words of, of Mr. Darwin himself, right? We'll be tying all of these together to look at the commonality of thought, right? Richard Dawkins, evolutionary biologist and prominent atheist, has been a vocal critic of Christianity, as we know, and has used Darwinian science to argue against traditional Christian ethics. In the selfish gene, he asserts that morality is a result of natural selection and that religious moral codes are necessary. Hold on, nice just copying Sam Harris, right? And this is also the implications, because we will have to be looking at what are the implications. Hey, Thunderous, 
of Darwin's thought and idea. Ideas of consequences. So Peter Singer, philosopher and bioethicist, has used Darwinian ideas to challenge Christian ethics. Singer thinks that voluntary euthanasia is morally justified. Disabled non-persons may be killed. Now, this is not a discussion on Martin Luther. Uh, I actually don't want to go into any. I, I don't want to go into any length, but I, I will be adding at least one slide on Martin Luther here. Okay, which you guys are. Uh, let me just go there quickly. Right, as you know, Martin Luther recommended that the disabled child be suffocated to death because Martin Luther stated that, yeah, this disabled child is not a real human, therefore that disabled child can be killed, right? So Martin Luther made it basically acceptable in his writings to, to kill the mentally handicapped, to kill the disabled, a vegetal. So, yeah, so Luther had himself seen and touched the boy and he advised the Prince of Anhalt to have the boy drowned. He also advised to have the boy suffocated to death. And of course, the Nazis utilized this as justification for them applying Darwin's ideas and killing it to, what a quarter million people who they considered unfit, right? Besides the fact that they used their war machine and ultimately like 36 million people died because the Nazis launched World War II, which because they considered themselves the fittest and everyone else unfit, but yeah. So he's just re recommending murdering people. It's acceptable. It's okay. They have no soul. They're non-persons. Now, don't forget no newborn should be considered a person for 30 days, and the attending physician should kill some disabled babies on the spot. So for 30 days after birth, you can legally, according to him, kill a baby because it's a non-person. Thank you, Mr. Peter Singer. This is atheist morality. This is the logical extension of social Darwinism. In Roman society, the pater familias, so the family head, had absolute control over the baby's life and could leave a baby to die with no legal consequences. Yes, full-term abortion thunders. Romans didn't kill unwanted newborns directly. They abandoned them on the street or threw them in the garbage. The practice of abandoning unwanted infants was called exposure since the baby died from exposure to the elements. Now, understand, with, in Rome, in that time, you could kill a child until the age of two because they considered that until the age of two, it was not a human. So the father could decide to murder his child until the age of two. Christians would rescue these children. Christians would go and find these children and save their lives. Atheists, right? The same Romans that the atheists appealed to were the same pagan Greek and Roman thinking that the atheists appealed to were the murderers in this case. This is atheism bringing this back. Atheists bringing this back. Understand? So hopefully Phil Talk can understand that atheism is, is filth. It is murder. And, and I've gone on and on in my other talks, historical talks, showing the evidence for that. Atheism always supports Satanism, crazy pagan practices, and the most degenerate behavior. So, the Guardian called him the most dangerous man in the world. He's a philosopher who eats no meat or dairy. Yeah, so he's holy. My gosh, he eats no meat or dairy. Great, someone give him a rosary or something. And thinks we're no better than animals. So we are no better than animals. In fact, he thinks a chimp has more rights to exist than a person and that killing babies can be justified. He's hated and feared for daring to challenge the sanctity of human life. Kevin Toulis on the controversial philosophy of Peter Singer. See, and he's, what is he using for this? Well, Darwinist ideas, Darwinist thought, social Darwinism. And of course, this man is an atheist. Do you understand? This is something that atheists, I'm sure, would be highly embarrassed about. I get really angry about these things, reading this stuff. So is this making sense so far? Is the flow good? Because I'm sort of working through the ideas. Should I have rearranged and added different things? The Spartans practice eugenics by throwing newborns into a ravine judged to be unfit. This was only for baby boys. Yeah, but they would freeze them overnight, right? Leave them in the cold overnight, seeing if they died by the next day and so on. So we are seeing this via laws being enacted for nature being equal to man. Yes, it's paganism. It's witchcraft. This is going back to, don't forget, atheism is essentially paganism reborn. Right? It's the rise of the new paganism. Current Affairs magazine, a magazine of politics and culture. Now Peter Singer argues that it might be okay to rape disabled people. I mean, what do you say to this? What do you say to this? The New York Times lets the utilitarian, he's a utilitarian philosopher, another atheist philosophy, make his most horrifying argument yet. 
Um, so, raise your hands. Who thinks it's okay to rape disabled people? This man is disgusting. Okay, wild animals are stuck in cages. This man walks free. Yeah, what German community and party name themselves out of the spot in this coincidence? Uh, just, just what is the word in German? Please tell me what the name themselves after the Spartans. The uh, yeah, very clear. Everything perfectly lining up. Don is either Catholic or Orthodox. Yes, yes, probably Eastern Orthodox. You know, by his, by his. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to. Yeah, yeah. Man trying to justify makes perfect sense. All, all. Yeah, all of us thought like Darwin until the saving grace of Christ. Yeah, this guy should be punished severely. Yeah, he should be fired into the sun. I mean, seriously, the man should be thrown naked into the sun. Honestly. This, yes, it makes me very angry too. Mentally disabled people might be raped. It's okay because, you see, they are non-people. They are non-souls. See, And that's the very same thing, don't forget, that Martin Luther taught, right? So, yeah. Checks T9. <laughs> I love this channel. No bullshit. Thanks, just straight up. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Abortion, infanticide, and planned parenthood. Large families, page 63. For the sake of those who find difficulty in adjusting old-fashioned ideas to the facts, that's you, you Christians, the most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. Yeah, so <laughs> the merciful thing that you need to do, if you have a large family, the most merciful thing you can do for your child is to murder it, is to kill it. Who said that? Well, that was Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. Uh, in the book, The Woman and the New Race, Woman and the New Race, Margaret Sanger. And Margaret Sanger founded the American Birth Control League in 1921, a public health nurse. She opened the first birth control clinic in the United States in Brooklyn in 1916. She has long been lauded as a feminist icon and pioneer in killing babies legally in the name of science, i.e. eugenics. So now you've got Peter Singer, eugenicist. You've got, well, yeah. Okay, so let's just, well, we're getting somewhere now. Darwinian eugenics is a discredited belief in improving the human race through selective breeding, but also warfare. So they say, well, it's selective breeding. No, no, no. It's also by warfare, by murdering your opponents, dropping bombs on them, shooting them in the face with bullets. So understand eugenics is not just about selective breeding, making roses. It is also by going there with your army and murdering them and taking their stuff. Please understand, eugenics does encompass warfare. It is generally targeted at poor people, the disabled, those you dislike, of course, and non-Aryans in one egregious example. In one egregious example, kill all the non-Aryans, which means anyone who is not German. Mengele today will be glorified, but while well, Mengele is sadly, he comes out of that school. Okay, Mengele is very much firmly in this atheist, eugenics, social Darwinist school. Thanks, atheists. You guys are just, just home runs every time. From 1952 to 1959, Sanger served as president of the International Planned Parenthood Federation, known for planning to kill babies for the reasons Sanger gives above. Her father was a free-thinking atheist. Her mother was apparently an Irish Catholic, but her father was a free-thinking atheist, and apparently she took after her father. Sanger joined the New York Socialist Party around 1912. I see I have a typo I need to fix there. Okay, so yeah, I need to fix my little typo. Let me find this. Good grief, I moved a little faster. Okay, I'll fix it later. That's fine. So, around 1912, she joins the New York Socialist Party. Now, socialists are not Christians. They reject Christianity. In fact, socialists are by definition atheists. Marx, Lenin, Stalin, and Mao were also socialists. She kept great company. Okay, so she was in the same company as Marx, Lenin, Stalin, and Mao. And of course, the, the I believe the Church of England buried her in a cemetery with a wonderful ceremony, whatever, as a Christian when she was a socialist. Insane. Sanger published eight issues of the feminist magazine, The Woman Rebel, which was emblazoned with the motto, No Gods, No Masters. That sounds very... See, if it's not Buddhist... It's Lutheran. If it's not Lutheran, it's Calvinist. No gods, no masters. Definitely sounds compy atheist, right, guys? No gods? Mm, I don't know. Let me know. Brimming with articles about sex education, abortion, and the array of injustices that capitalism inflicted upon women. Freaking socialist atheist. Okay? I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah. 
So let's look at the French Revolution. Let's go a little bit further back in history. Let's look at two major figures. You had the Freemason, Jean-Paul Marat, who wanted heads to roll. He was a journalist. He called for death, right? For those enemies of the empire, enemies of the state needed to die. Those who wouldn't convert to the religion of the atheist religion of the French cult, well, they had to die. From September 1793 to July 1794, at least around 2,000 people a month were publicly beheaded in Paris. Riyadh does the same. Many for unwillingness to support the atheist jihad. An anti-Christian eulogy was given by the atheist Marquis de Sade, right? And of course, the, the atheist Marquis de Sade gives us the word sadism and the word sadist, right? And of course, Marquis de Sade compared Marat to Jesus Christ. And he said here, A heart of Jesus, a heart of Marat, their Jesus, the Christian Jesus, was but a false prophet. But Marat is a god. Long live the heart of Marat. Like Jesus, Marat detested nobles, priests, the rich, and scoundrels. So, like Jesus, he led a poor and frugal life. That's from the uh, historian Shama, right? Okay, so now we got Mar Mar the Marquis de Sade, an atheist, talking about another atheist, and of course being very anti-Christian, just like atheists are today. But let's go on. The Marquis de Sade, an induced abortion. This is from an article in the National Library of Medicine. They're speaking of Marquis de Sade here. In 1795, the Marquis de Sade published his La Philosophique dans les Boudoirs, the philosophy of the bedroom, or the politics of the bedroom, in which he proposed the use of induced abortion for social reasons and as a means of population control. So, again, you've got atheists constantly saying religion is about control. Well, atheism is about murdering people. Okay? It is about killing people in the name of population control as policy. It is from this time that medical and social acceptance of abortion can be dated. Previously, the subject had not been discussed in public in modern times. It was largely due to the Sad's writing that induced abortion received the impetus which resulted in its subsequent spread in Western society. Abortion, murder of babies, and now post-birth abortion, thank atheists, because atheists it's a sick, satanic religion. Uh, Labgill says it is offensive to say Darwin is Catholic because he doesn't believe in the Bible or that Jesus is the Son of God. Catholics believe the Bible is divine revelation. Yeah, look, um, deal with the sarcasm. I tend to I tend to speak using irony and tons of sarcasm. Okay, it's that, or I'm going to be swearing at the screen constantly because this stuff upsets me. You have no idea. Reading this eight hours a day drives me nuts. Okay, so. Yeah. In 1795, he published La Philosophie dans le, dans le de, whatever, Philosophy of the Bedroom. Okay. Politics of the Bedroom. It is considered his masterpiece, right? His masterwork. The Sad held all life cheaply and he spent most of his life attacking God and the Christian church. His book attacks established religion, morality, family ties, and social structures. He advocates sodomy, incest, lust, and cruelty for its own sake. He scorned the view that man is that man is not responsible for his own existence and that God grants an embryo its soul. You see, you're a non-person. So these ideas come out of crazy people like this. Modern scientists are pushing these ideas, claiming it is scientific. The realistic view, according to de Sade, was that since murder is such a trivial matter, murder is a trivial matter, destruction of an infant which has not achieved the age of reason is of small consequence. Evolution, yes, evolution. Um, yeah, so so this is, yeah, I think that is correct. We're dealing with evolution. Yeah, most certainly. So, yeah, let's talk a bit more about Marquis de Sade. So the atheist Marquis de Sade published his La Philosophie, La Philosophie dans les Boudoirs, whatever. I just butchered the, the French, in which he proposed the use of induced abortion for social reasons for population control, right? We've discussed that. He attacks established religion, and he says that destruction of the infant, which has not achieved the age of reason, is small consequence. So life doesn't matter. These are sick, sick people. So now the cynic, the Sad, wanted to watch the world burn. An anti-Christian eulogy was given by the atheist Marquis de Sade, source of the word sadism at the funeral of Jean-Paul Marat, comparing 
Malat to Jesus Christ. Great, we've spoken about that. But the Sad brought his own feelings and a value system that justified them into the light. His masterpiece is philosophy in the bedroom. Nature, mother to us all, he says, never speaks to us save of ourselves. In other words, mother nature speaks only to us of self-interest. Nothing has more of the egoistic than her message. And what we recognize most clearly therein is the immutable and sacred counsel. Prefer thyself. Love thyself, no matter at whose expense. So that would be psychopathic and ultimately utterly narcissistic. But the others say, but the others, they say to you, may avenge themselves. So for instance, if you screw someone else over at their expense, they may want revenge. Pure idolatry, yes, worship of the self, right? But he says here, let them, let them avenge themselves. The mightier one will vanquish. He will be right. So in other words, fight them, attack them. The one who wins is the one who is right because the mighty will win. Very well, there it is. The primitive state of perpetual strife and destruction for which nature's hand created us. Do you understand the alignment with Darwin? Darwin legitimized this evil, disgusting point of view. Darwin took the Saad's sick, twisted, psychopathic ideas and made it scientific. He justified this as natural. So he removed morality from the world. He removed God from the world. This is Darwin's work. And so he says, this is it, the primitive state of perpetual strife and destruction for which nature created us and within which alone it is of, it is of bond, and within which alone it is of advantage to her that we remain. So in other words, nature wants us fighting. Nature wants us in conflict. They want us to have this battle of the weak versus the strong, the strong destroying the weak, the strong overriding the weak. And this is development because the better will win and therefore you get progress. Sounds just out of LeVay's Satanic Bible. So now, okay, have I made a, a link? Is there, do you see so far a link between what the message of Darwin, the message of the atheists and the message of Marquis de Sade? Is this logical? Do you start to see now that Darwin simply legitimized evil? by calling it scientific. Is that is that a valid a valid statement for me to make based on what I've presented so far? Um, SP Jones says, guess this was his inspiration. Yeah. Okay, Kush says yes. Um, let me just try to catch up with the comments. Yes, and the same elements can be found in Islam, yes. Yeah. All these ideologies coming all together to atheism, yes. Um, yeah, I'm still curious who that who that guy was, but let me go and find out. I'm actually let's see what Dean sent me. Phil talk. Oh, good grief! Looks like a teenager. Okay, so Marquis de Sade, a proto Darwinian. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> Charles Darwin, like de Sade, asserted that nature is a constant battle where the strong have the right. To eliminate the weak. Now you'll know there's another famous <clears throat> Austrian who said the very same thing and practiced it. However, Darwin did not delve into the specific social implications of this idea. He left it open to interpretation so everyone was able to take from it and apply it as they wanted to. But he opened the door. He said that the battle of the strong versus the weak and that the strong destroy the weak this is something that is natural. This is the way of nature. Nothing to do with atheism. Yes, Deno Dennis, correct. Right. This ambiguity allowed the social and intellectual elite to manipulate. Oh, got an app that keeps dying on me. This ambiguity allowed the social and intellectual elite to manipulate the principles of Darwinism to their advantage, leading to two centuries of warfare, oppression, and environmental destruction. The survival of the fittest, correct? XYZ. Darwin legitimized it, but that phrase fails to encapsulate the philosophy that it's based on that comes before, which is pure evil. I laughed out loud about a certain famous painter. Yes, 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 yes. If someone had just bought his freaking paintings, you know. Darwin gave the fundamentals to natural selection and all that. So Stalin modified it a bit and applied it too. He said killing. I mean, look, Marxism, they're, they're all variations of Marxism. They all Marxism is just another variation of socialism. It's all socialism at the end of the day. It's 
I mean, not, national socialism is one variation of socialism, as is Marx, as is, they hated each other. I mean, they're fighting each other constantly. Yes, the elite take this ideology as their own to justify their indifference to the hoi polloi, the rabble, correct, right? Because they are the betters. Darwin ultimately paved the way for the deaths of millions. Many continue to adhere to Desaad's proto-Darwinian perspective of nature. This is a proto-Darwinian perspective, perceiving it as inherently amoral, cynical, and self-centered battle for survival. Uh, yes, Lab Girl, I know about Marxism. I will be doing a talk on Marxist Satanism in the future. In fact, this is a, this is a series I'm doing on Darwin and Hitler, Darwin to Hitler. Then I need to do Darwin to Marx next. <laughs> so, uh, and then Darwin's Marxist Satanism, I have discussed that in other shows. I have done uh, slides on that as well. Then, surprisingly, this guy pops up, looks familiar, on the Marxist International Archive on Marxist.org. Org. That pops up. Okay, fascinating. What do they tell us? On Marxist.org, they have an article on the Marquis de Sade by Paul Eliwild. It was in that asylum that on December 2, 1814, in full possession of his reason, they're saying he wasn't crazy, he wasn't nuts, the Marquis de Sade was perfectly lucid. This precursor of Proudhon, of Proudhon, Fourier, and Darwin, Malthus, Spencer, and all of modern psychiatry, this apostle of the most absolute freedom, the most absolute freedom, this man who wanted all men to return to the source of their instincts, return to nature. Do you understand? The return to nature means the right to rape people, the right to rob people, the right to invade, the right to kill. Absolute freedom with no restraints. Lenin actually spoke about that. I spoke about my atheism series about Lenin. In full possession of his reason, this precursor of Darwin, the Marxist Trevere, <laughs> the Marquis de Sade, this crazy Satanist, as a precursor of Darwin. I mean, the, these things just tie together. And this man who wanted all men to return to the source of their instincts and ideas so they could have the courage to see themselves as they were and to bow only before real necessities, he passed away. Before real necessities, in other words, life, survival, the survival of the fittest. Just Janice, it is madness. What do you do? I, I want to scream at the microphone. Do you understand how angry this makes me? Yeah, yeah. You have to do something on Malthus too. Man, look, there's only so much I can do in a given day, right? On a given month or year even. It's, it's, you have no idea how much work this is to, to dig up these, these little connections. This is hours of digging, believe me. It doesn't just, it's not like you say, AI, write me a presentation. It doesn't work like Look at the man's eyes. This is another photo of him I didn't include previously. Look at the man's eyes. Yeah, the ANC is just all for themselves. <laughs> so Darwin writes, man is the highest good. The highest of creation is man. This is what Marx said. Understand, this is what Hitler said. So from death, famine, rape. Oh, what? Rape? Oh, thank you, Darwin. And the concealed war of nature. We can see that the highest good which we can conceive, the creation of the higher animals that has directly come. So let me do that again. Okay. We can see that the highest good which we can conceive is the creation of the higher animals. Man has directly come from this. Okay. For Darwin, nature created man in the image of man. I might have mistyped that. Um, yeah. So, so basically, the higher animals came out of the warfare of nature, the tyranny of nature. The violence of nature, right? From the war, from rape, from death, from famine, from evil, the highest of creation has come. And the highest of creation is man. Uh, it appears that the Autobot, yeah. So, yeah, I did change the Autobot settings. Um, it is, it was, I, I don't know if they've reprogrammed it because it, it has become overly sensitive. I removed one of the settings. Don't use all caps, right? In the chat, do not use all caps. It, it's going to react to that. Um, yeah, we are. At, Kush makes a very good point. He says, we are taught to revere. Uh, that's actually, let me just put that up. He states here, we are taught to revere these vile monsters as great men by society. These are disgusting pigs, and we're supposed to look at them as great thinkers because they're presenting a very limited view of what they said and what they thought. And thus the nobility of the natives, the nobility of the savages. Yeah, this is, do you understand the implications of these words? He's not that different from the side. He might be more civilized, more scientific, but so, so what are you guys getting from this so far? What are you receiving from this? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Do I need additional detail? Too much detail? Uh, what are you taking away from this? 
Atheism and Darwinism take original sin off the table for discussion. Yeah, there is. Yeah, true enough. What is the implication of that, Afun? I'd like to know more. What are your thoughts? Um, Jewish. John McDermott says very edifying. Yeah, just Janice says she's shouting here. So Stalin instituted the Soviet Union the teachings of evolution in the curriculum as part of the communist campaign to eradicate religion. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, um, Marx was an, was a was an, was a devout Darwinist as well. Facts of a feeling says it's mind boggling. They teach at schools that these people are geniuses in modern society. Yeah, atheism has big problems when it comes to origins. Incredible presentation as always. Thank you X Y Z. Right, so let's go and talk a little further about abortion. Now, there's a thing called the Lilith Fund. You can look them up online. The Lilith, actually, well, let me just go there. What the heck? Um, let me see. Did it come up? No, it didn't. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, let me just bring this up. For instance, the Lilith Fund. Uh, what does the Lilith Fund give us? It gives us money for abortion. Okay, the Lilith Fund provides blah, 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 kill your babies, okay? So, who is Lilith? Let's have a look. Who is Lilith? Lilith is a female figure in Mesopotamian and Judaic mythology. She is the first wife of Adam, the primordial she-demon, incarnation of lust, and a child-killing witch. And of course, today, she is a feminist icon. Atheism for the win. So, yeah. Hey, Lilith, the oldest demon who killed babies. Yes, Lilith, Lilith is in the demon. Correct. Shula says, brilliant exposition. Exposition. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just waking up. I was sleeping before this. I was really tired. I'm, so, yeah, I had a busy few days and uh, didn't get much sleep. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, the second Midrash mention of Lilith. Now, there's, she's mentioned in the Jewish Midrash, right? The second Midrash mention of Lilith is Numbers Rabbah 1625. Moses pleads after God expresses his anger at the Israelites, and Moses responds to a threat by God that he will destroy the Israelite people. Remember, the Israelites often turned against God, turned to paganism, right? turned to worship other gods, pleading that God should not be like Lilith, who kills her own children. And have a look here. Notice the crescent moon above Lilith. That's really fascinating, the crescent moon above Lilith. And uh, this is Lilith again here with her familiars, the owls. And not sure what those are, monkeys, bats, like rats, who knows, overgrown rats, who knows what that. Yeah. So, God, do not destroy the Israelite people, that the nations of the world may not regard you as a cruel being and say the generation of the flood came and he destroyed them. The generation of the separation came and he destroyed them. The Sodomites and the Egyptians came and he destroyed them. And these also whom he called my son, my firstborn. Now, what's interesting is that atheists, of course, say, well, God was evil. God called for death. God called for the death of evil people, certainly, right? The destruction of evil. However, atheists call for the destruction of babies. They call it healthcare, right? And they've killed tens of millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of babies, and that's okay, right? So this man-made religion has, has had hundreds, at least tens of millions of children, babies, murdered. And that's okay. But yeah, so hypocrisy as always. As that Lilith who, when she finds nothing else, turns upon her own children. So because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land, he hath slain them. So he says, please don't kill your people. Don't kill your Ishtar. Yes. So this is Mesopotamian. This goes all the way through Canaan, Mesopotamia, and so on. So it's definitely all the way. Um, Lilith killed her own baby, Dashin. He's dashing his head on a rock. And from the child brain pieces came out the demons, the legend says. A Phoenician, she might be. Look, Lilith, if you go, one day I need to do a talk on Lilith. I mean, it's fascinating. It's a really fascinating story. So it looks like, like for instance, many cultures th through different geographies of that region and different times over a very long period of time have a particular deity or particular entity, right, that is described in this fashion. It would seem that this is not a different deity, a separate one each time. It's the same one expressed in the character and the language of that culture. So it looks like when you go through like a, 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 a three, 2000 year stretch from BC and you go from this place to this place to this place, it's all Lilith at different times at different places described in the culture and the characteristics of that particular civilization. 
So she has a thread that runs through history. <clears throat> Lilith and Baphomet take the blood of babies, which means abortion, in the study of demonology. Stewards impact church. Thank you for that. Yeah, there's a great deal going on here. There's a great deal going on. So Lelinsky's Rouge is all about how you frame your position. Yeah, that's just how to use propaganda, right? Um, let me see. Crescent Moon, you say. Where have I seen that before, Yeshua? I don't know. There's Crescent Moon. Anyone knows of any sort of Crescent Moon thing going on here? I, I don't know. don't know. Never heard of it. So, a different genesis. No Imago Dei. Ernst Heckel. Now, there's a lot more I have to do on Heckel. I have not finished the slides. This is very raw overview right now. Ernst Heckel is the most famous German Darwinist of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He believed that the most important aspect of Darwinism was the animal ancestry of humans, just like Peter Springer, whatever, what his name was. Was that guy? Whatever, the, the atheist earlier who thinks you can kill babies. It's just fine. The animal ancestry of humans, which would bring forth a complete revolution in the entire world of humanity. Interesting. Right, now we have a look at another dude. Hermann Joseph Schaffhausen presented a paper at the meeting of the Versammlung Deutsche Naturforscher und Ärzte. This is the meeting of the German natural scientists and doctors in 1867 titled On the Anthropological Questions of Our Time. He argued that humans had developed from animal ancestors. Notice this is slightly prior to Darwin. He also believed that humans are the pinnacle of creation and that a divine plan directed the emergence of humans. Okay, so there's a divine plan, but humans are the pinnacle of creation. So humans are the great gods, right? Uh, let me see. Lilith also screams prophets in a cave. Sound familiar? Yeah. So yeah, maybe my memory is bad, but the crescent on top of, crescent on top of Orthodox and Catholic churches. You're right. Catholic mosques. Catholic mosques? I could be wrong. I, I'm something's. Yeah. Um, Eva ever says the demon wanders through the whole world and switches the shapes depending on where and with who. Yes. <laughs> Buddhist Islamists strike again. The Dusa, yes, the Buddhist Islamists strike again. So look, these ideas, all I'm indicating is, and there's a lot to be said about Ernst Haeckel, because Ernst Haeckel was a fraud, right? There's a great deal to be said, and he also supported genocide. We'll talk about that in the future. Oh, bad memory, we are getting old. Yes. But there's a lot to be said about Ernst Haeckel. I'm not going to do that here and now. So like Darwin, he argued that the biological and intellectual differences that separate humans from other animals are quantitative, not qualitative. You've got more XYZ chromosomes, right? You've got more genes, I don't know. You've got less of this, more of that, right? As opposed to qualitative, not a God-given difference of soul, right? Not a God-given change in intellect of some type, right? But you're not made in the image of God. You are just a more advanced animal. You just have slightly better code, slightly better genetics. And he noted the simian, monkey, or ape-like traits observed in the anatomy of both prehistoric peoples and what he called the existing lower races. So in the 1860s, you had lower races, in other words, inferior humans. And you know what you do with inferior humans. You kill them, according to Darwin. Uh, Christianity is the only religion that claims all people are equal and made in the image of God. And, and that is true, because, of course, Islam says you're in the Jahiliyyah. And, yeah, you know how that goes. <laughs> Lloyd de Jong, please leave my chromosomes alone from XYZ. I will not touch your chromosomes, I promise. Um, Bo Rudder says, some orient uh, OE crosses. Um, uh, he retracted that. Okay, fine. This is unrelated, Lloyd. I'm inviting you to the traditional Catholic Mass. I've been to the traditional Catholic Mass. I've, um, there's actually an interesting, um, is it Augustinian? I don't know. I can't remember. It's, they, they once... I think once a month, maybe once a week, whatever, on a Sunday, they have a, um, a very interesting Latin mass. It's a very, it's a particular Dominican, Dominican friars. So I've been there. It's, it's actually quite amazing to go to the Latin mass and actually see what it's like. I live in Poland, okay? There's not exactly Baptist churches on any corner, okay? So when I go to church, I go to the Catholic church. They all speak Polish. They may as well be speaking Klingon, right? But I, that's where I go because, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, it's not like you can just march down the street off to the Baptist church, right? That, there's not a lot of that going on here, believe me. So, yeah, let's let's talk a bit more. So, they've destroyed the Imago Dei, but these ideas are very much in line with Darwin. So, Ernst Haeckel and scientific fraud. Now, this is very brief treatment. This is not a full treatment, okay? Haeckel wanted to convince readers that all vertebrates share a common ancestor. So, he wanted to tie all life into Darwinism. And so, to do so, he lied about it. How fudged embryo illustrations led to drawn-out lies. Yeah, so I'm awake now. At least my brain is mostly awake. I'd, just, I'd woken up like 10 minutes before to make coffee to uh, 
to do this talk. So in New Scientist, how fudged embryo illustrations led to lies by Matthew Cobb, 14 January, January 2015. Heckel's embryos, images, evolution, and fraud. So yeah, the best way to prove evolution is to lie about it, apparently. As Heckel put it, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, right? In other words, if you can't beat them with facts, baffle them with... Yeah. So he claims that our embryonic development repeats our evolutionary past. So embryonic development repeats evolutionary past. And he made these fake-ass drawings that we go from the stage of whale to tadpole to Mercedes-Benz to 1967 Beetle to Chevrolet Corvette. Then we go to tomato, carrot. Then we turn from Coke can. Then it goes to bottle of orange juice. Then it goes from here to cow, moose, salamander, lizard, snake, E.T., the extra testicle. And then goes from um, little swamp rat, monkey to human. That, that was his idea. Complete crap. But look, when you're doing science, don't let the facts get in the way, right? Sounds like the science of child development in the Quran. <laughs> exactly, horse. It sounds exactly. Uh, look up Klingon, our father prayer. It's awesome, yeah. So, um, East Europeans are 98% Christian, Orthodox, or Catholic. Islam and Protestants are, yeah, included in the other category. Yeah, so that's true. Vegetal, which country are you in? So, Heckel's excuse was, I lied, but others lied too. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the end of the 19th century, Darwin's theory was increasingly popular amongst German, Germany's intellectual elite. Yeah, I need to do more on Heckel, okay? Heckel's um, involvement or attachment to the Nazis and, and that ideology of, of eugenics and murder and so on. Right? So, <laughs> as Christian Prince always says, I like bananas, thus I must have come from monkeys. Yes. <laughs> right. So no, so Lucy is known as a bonobo ape. Thanks, Thunderous. That's interesting. Good to know. See, I need to look into some of this because look, atheists don't realize science has enabled fraud on a massive scale, but murder, genocide, atrocity, right, crime. Science is so implicated in crime, it's insane. By the end of the 19th century, Darwin's theory was very, very popular amongst Germany's intellectual elite. Darwin claimed that humans and other mammals were the product of natural selection, a blind struggle. Right, so this was a blind struggle um, for existence where the fittest survived and reproduced. And then they state, and they got this out of scientific textbooks, okay, the less fit died or were killed off. This actually ended up in science textbooks. We, you know, that the less fit will be, will die or we will kill them all. <laughs> and they had to change all that, okay? So yeah, that's pretty much how that is. Um, yeah, so, so, but this is literally what they thought. If you're less fit, you die or you are killed off. And scientists promoted this idea and nations implemented it. They literally implemented it because Marx was a very devout Darwinist as well. So killing all of those who weren't fit, well, that's justified because it's science. In his book, Descent of Man, Darwin made it clear that his idea of natural selection had implications for human society. Charles Darwin was a social Darwinist and he believed that Darwinism should be applied to human societies. Darwin worried that civilized Western societies were harming humanity by helping the poor, caring for the sick, and otherwise saving those that nature would have killed off. Do you understand? Darwin's a great man who said that Western societies are harming humanity by allowing us to have these unfit among us, the black tribes of the world the unfit black tribes of the world, the, the gypsies, the Slavs, as the Nazis eventually took this to its logical extension, but also the, those who are disabled, okay? So by helping these poor, by caring for the sick, a Christian command, I believe it is, Christian moral command, and saving those that nature would have killed off, we are harming the world. And therefore, Christianity is doing harm to the world. And what must happen? Christianity has to go because science needs to kill you for the sake of progress. Being atheists, do you understand what atheism leads to and what it's based on here? So death, of course, brings life. <clears throat> right? So by his paradigm, extermination of those considered inferior was natural. So Thunderous says this, um, 
So here's the thing. I still need to go and verify some of this. I haven't had a chance to go and look up every single quote, every single reference. I have done most of it, I believe. But so Darwin also notes the poor breeding greater numbers and did not want to be overrun by those considered feeble minded. Yes, there's, there's definitely an issue there. Yeah. So, so guys, I mean, is this dull, uninteresting? Is this just science or is this actually showing you from a, from a historical point of view how this is anti-Christian, why you must have Christianity, why you need to know this so that and how all of this stuff is not science. This is evil dressed up as science. This is anti-Christian, anti-biblical, anti-God propaganda and a movement designed to destroy what is good, right? Evil in, in action. And this is why you need to know this so that you can understand what Christianity is, why it is so different from everything else and why it is important that you start to, to what's the word? You, you need to organize. You need to start to act against this. You, you can't just be passive anymore. It is, we are late in the game. Understand this assault has been running for centuries. You need to understand that your enemy has no moral leg to stand on. These atheists are genocidal psychopaths and this needs to be pointed out to them. So all of the claims about the church are 99.9% .9 absolute falsehood. Hopefully I have taught you that. And I'm showing you that these emperors have no clothes. In fact, they are evil, disgusting pigs, right? Atheism is steeped in evil, in genocide, in immorality, in filth. It needs to be pointed out. This is what atheism hides. And this is you as Christians, you need to fight against this. Uh, do I make myself clear? I mean, do I have a point here? Do you see now? why you need to fight against this. There is no good faith discussion with evil. There is no tolerance of evil like this. This is evil. So by his paradigm, mm, sorry. So extermination of those considered inferior was natural. Apparently Darwin was ambivalent about some of the social implications of his theory. Well, okay, I'll delete that line because whatever. Darwin's ideas supplied a new generation of German political leaders, social thinkers and scientists with what they saw as a biological justification for world domination. Literally did. So in the late 19th and early 20th century, many of them were promoting racism, what they called scientific racism, right? Racial extermination or extinction and gaining Lebensraum. And of course, the guy who heavily promoted Lebensraum was this guy, right? That's why he invaded Poland, because of Lebensraum. These thinkers were promoting social Darwinist competition as promoted by Charles Darwin and, of course, by the Marquis de Sade and many other leading biologists and the Marquis de Sade. Do you understand where this leads? Why this has to be pointed out as immoral? These are people who are operating out of evil, out of pagan evil, literally pagan evil. They have destroyed the moral rules of the Bible and they're not implementing a pagan agenda. Quite literally, atheists are fucking crazy people. Uh, let me just catch up with the uh, with the chat. I feel physically sick. That's just Janice. Do you, do you know how angry this makes me to read this? I want to reach through the screen and choke people. It, it is this is disgusting. Civilized humans promoting murder as scientific, and then of course they want to tell you, well, you know, we're using science. Yeah, but you're hiding the scum underneath. That is. Auf Deutsch sagen die Leute, das ist Kack mit Soße. Okay? So, in English, that would translate as that is poop with sauce. So, it's a pile of poop with sauce on it. So, yeah, they're showing you the sauce. They're just hiding the poop. It's 99% poop. Ignore the sauce. All right. So, murder is life, promiscuity is love, unique friend. Yes, that is really, yeah, sadly. Darwin also notes the poor breeds. Let me see. Goodness gracious, how this turned Christianity upside down seems like straight from the mind of Satan. Yes, it is an inversion of Christianity. It's an inversion of Christian morality. So, yeah, um, for just 30 years ago, we had serious discussions regarding the immorality of using aborted fetus stem cells. Look where we are now. So, Pedro Jr. says, what makes it more angry is that the school system hails and promotes this man. I feel sick. Yes, of course, they don't tell you this part, okay? This is just me doing a few days of work on this now because I've had this for a year or something. I just haven't had time to get to it. So yeah, I need to, I uh, should finish soon. This is a preview. So um, does this flow well? I mean, in terms of like, in terms of the following it, is it logical? The way that I'm skipping from topic to topic and then connecting together, is it flowing well? Is it logical? Um, because yeah, I'm, I'm, 
I'm probably going to go back and make some changes to the slides. And um, I've got 50 slides so far. It's probably going to be like 200 at the end of the day. But um, this would be like part one of this to introduce Darwinism. And then, you know, as we and tying all of these different ideas together into Nazism, and we're going to show exactly how Hitler was just pushing this 100%. <clears throat> Hitler was the ultimate Darwinist. Very bluntly, Hitler was the ultimate Darwinist. And then we'll go part two, uh, where we really go deep into Hitler himself, how World War II really genuinely originated out of Darwin's ideas. And uh, then I'll do smocks as well. Yeshua's Yahweh, take it back to the drawing board, mate. Yeah, so, I mean, does this rewrite the history? Um, does, would you say then, then that that means that this rewrites the history of Darwin? This rewrites how science has misled you by failing to provide you with the critical detail. Michelle says, very good workload. Thank you very much, Michelle. It's a really good flow, Pedro Jr. Uh, this is, as per usual, a very good presentation. Thank you, Thunderous. Um, Eva Eva says, as we say in Poland, Gówno uh, zawniette w Srebrko. Nie rozumiem. So, yeah, what does that say in Polish um, when I have to translate? Can you please translate that, Eva, for me? Um, otherwise, I'm just going to have to go to my... Now I'm curious what the heck that means. Now you guys are going to get my secret that I use for uh, translating Polish. Just kidding on point as always. It flows well for me. It's horse. Um, wrapped in silver. Ah. Okay, it's Treberko. Okay, I thought it was silver. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I said, can't take Hitler now. <laughs> Just kidding on point as always. Cannot wait to uh, uh, the si take it back to the drawing board. Yeah, sorry, Yeshua. Now I understand what you mean. Um, oh, good grief, yeah. Okay, yes, so it means poo wrapped up in silver. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, so let me go a little, just a moment longer. Lebensraum, okay? So the Germans came after, and um, yeah, look, Darwin's mentor at Cambridge stated that he thought from reading Darwin's work that Darwin deliberately, not accidentally, deliberately destroyed biblical morality and was attempting to undermine biblical morality by stripping God and human morals, biblical morals, out so that he could push science, okay? I'll do that slide. I'll show you that slide. So we've got this Lebensraum idea, which came pre-20th century, which obviously was picked up by the Nazis. So it says here, um, Wachsende Volkszahl, so growing numbers of people, growing population, Volkszahl, im fargen Nordland zwang neuen Lebensraum zu suchen. Okay, so growing population, growing numbers of people in Nordland is forcing new Lebensraum, living space, to find or to search. Okay, is forcing us to search for new living space. Das innerlich um, morsche Römerreich bricht im Ansturm der Germanen zusammen. Okay. So the Roman, the Roman Empire is, I've got it here on the side here. Okay, so it says here, the inwardly crumbling Roman Empire collapses with the German onslaught. And this is exactly what the Marquis de Sade, what Darwin were teaching, that the strong overcome and destroy the weak. And then they take those resources. It's a fight over resources. So understand Dawkins and all of these guys implicitly believe in all this. They promote this. So what he was doing was right. What he was doing was moral, right? This presentation was entitled 5,000 Years of German Culture. The slide references Lebensraum, the need for living space in German history. This is a Hitler Youth propaganda slide, but this, was, of course, was common within the Nazi um, ideology. In fact, this was policy, right, to take living space. So notice the war of annihilation is a natural law without which the organic world could not continue to exist at all. You must annihilate. This is natural or the world would not continue. Just as in nature, the struggle for existence is in the moving principle of evolution and perfection. So also in world history, the destruction of the weaker nations through the stronger is a postulate of progress. So yeah, to progress, kill your neighbor, okay? Murder thy neighbor. According to Darwin's theory, wars have always been of the greatest importance for the general progress of the human species. So progressives are Darwinists. What they're not telling you is that they believe in violence. The physically weaker, the less intelligent, the morally lower must give place to the stronger. German biologist Heinrich Ziegler in 1893. Darwin spawned, <laughs> Darwin spawned a psychopathic science. 
So, yeah, I'll go. I'll just mention one. Um, 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 I'll just mention one thing here. The first genocide. So, yeah, um, 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 uh, there's one that I want to do. Okay, this is the final slide, guys. I'll end it here. Right, much initial resistance to Darwinism sprang from a perceived moral threat. So at the time, people looked at this and saw this was a threat on morality. Adam Cedric, Darwin's former mentor in the natural science in the university, at the University of Cambridge, he's an English geologist, and he first applied the name Cambrian to the geologic period of time. And he's one of the founders of modern geology, said in a letter to Darwin in 1859, passages in your book, The Origin of Species, greatly shocked my moral taste. Darwin knew what he was doing. He was undermining Christian morality. His book was the creation legend, the creation myth, shall we say, for atheists, minus God. There's a moral and metaphysical part of nature, as well as a physical. A man who denies this is deep in the mire of folly. It is the crown and glory of organic science that it does, through final cause, link material to moral. You have ignored this link. And if I do not mistake your meaning, you have done your best to break it. Darwin wanted to separate God from nature, and therefore nature became cruel and evil because you now have survival of the fittest, the ultimate power. As long as you survive, as long as you, self-interest, narcissism, psychopathy, no rules, no morals, except that you survive. This is what Darwin created. This is what Darwin brought. Were it possible, which thank God it is not, to break it, humanity in my mind would suffer a damage that might brutalize it and sink the human race into a lower grade of degradation than any into which it has fallen since its written records tell us of its history. And here is where, obviously, the 20th century, which was the fruition of Darwin's ideas of survival of the fittest, of the fit destroying the weak, where those who applied that idea, those who found it, like the Marxists, right, the Soviets, the Nazis, applied these ideas, took them to their logical extreme, and murdered more people in 87 years than were murdered in the previous 1,900 years before. Atheists are responsible for the greatest genocide in history. Except, of course, maybe if you look at Islam and how many people Islam has killed in the last 1,400, but that aside... Atheists are responsible for massive, massive amounts of murder. So guys, I'll end it here. I've just got an hour and five minutes or so. Uh, I'll check the comments, but have you learned something? Has this made sense? Has this been rational, logical, sensible, factual, etc., etc.? Um, Shira did discuss this in Rise and Fall. I believe he did. I need to look through Shira. Look, I'm still working on this. I mean, this is just, I'm two days into my work on this. I've been collecting notes for ages, but I'm two days into putting this together. Um, I've got about 50 slides or something, um, and I'm probably going to end up doing a couple of hundred. Um, Lloyd, I don't know what to say sometimes. If, uh, yeah, I just want to scream and scream at the screen. Yeah, so... Is it safe to assume that AI will be the kind of perfection these people will worship? Yes, they, some feel and some have said they do think that AI is God because it's the perfection of man, right? People in the schools laughed at the Christians in the 40s and 50s for wanting to ban Darwin. They made them sound ignorant, while in reality, they're hiding his filth. Yeah, atheism is hiding a lot of filth, okay, historical filth. Um, threats on morality, aim of the Gnostic elites, yep. We can be more than sure that this thing will rebel against humans. Yes, that's AI. That's why the decided... Oh, that's why Marx dedicated the capital to Darwin, because Darwin theory offered a foundation to his theory. Yes, I have those notes in the slides. That's actually in my slides, but I'm not covering that today. I haven't finished that, so it's kind of, I don't like what I have. The notes are bad. I need to go do better research on that. If anyone has any notes, if you know more about the, the, the Marxian connection to, to uh, Darwin, how the two connect, and anything Marx said about that, please drop it in the chat later, because that'll be useful to me. I'm trying to tie that together better. Um... Bog Katie, thank you. Very thought-provoking and troubling. Yeah, disturbing for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, they, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, no one's tried proper atheism yet. Thanks, horse. Yeah, no one's tried true atheism yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you understand also that this effectively makes the Nazi enterprise atheistic? Now, certainly there's heavy occult view, but when you go to the French Revolution, okay, everyone knows today that the Nazis were heavily occultic. Right, because that was laughed at some time ago. Now we're discovering that the French Revolution was just like the Nazi movement, incredibly occultic, incredibly steeped in the occult. 
right? So, the, and the, the French Revolution, they were atheists, hardcore atheists, and incredibly occult at the same time. It doesn't make sense. Gnostics make no sense at all, right? They're crazy. So, now you're going to start to see that the, the Nazis were also, at least Hitler himself, atheistic, materialistic, hardcore Darwinist, right? That's why they have to claim he's not an atheist. So, there's a book written about this, S.P. Jones. Thanks, please do. Uh, Julie Buttigieg, hi. Or, yeah, hi, I'm from Australia. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. Um, so, always informative, career liaison. I can say this side of Darwin is not taught in universities. Yeah, and I, I have a knack for finding these things. Um, so, yeah, I'm still going to be working on this. I'm not ready with this yet, but I needed to just get this out to see how the audience received it. And uh, I'd love your feedback, love your thoughts, references, especially the Marx side. Um, that will be interesting how Marx ties into Darwin, Darwinism, how how Marx used Darwin. I've got some stuff. I've got some notes and things, but uh, some more is always useful. So yeah, guys, I'll probably do something. I might do something tomorrow. I might stream tomorrow. I'll let you guys know. I'll put it up. And um, Tuesday, I will be streaming with, um, probably streaming with Kennedy Hall of the Kennedy Report. I'll be doing a cult in Islam and the Islamic connection to the KKK, to the Freemasons, and to occult societies and groups. So I will be doing that on Tuesday. Um, that'll be about... 5.30 p.m. my time, which is 11.30 a.m. EST, which will be um, 4.30 p.m. London time. Yeah, Marx needed a creation story for his theories, exactly. So Darwinism provided a creation myth for atheists minus God. So Julie Buttigieg, I'm new. I just discovered Lord yesterday and I quite want to understand. Thank you. Well, yeah, hopefully you enjoy this. Um, Ever, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so guys, I will call it here. Um, I hope you've learned something. Um, please understand that, <laughs> look, here's, here's a simple view. Just assume you've been lied to, okay? Just honestly, when I look at information, I just assume I've been lied to and I need to go and question it, right? But then I go and look. So I find that it works really well. I just be really skeptical. There's another side to this. They present, it's propaganda, okay? You're being presented with a particular view. Scientists and atheists don't want to admit that they are vile pigs a lot of the time. Science is enabled murder, evil. It has brought evil into the world, so... Um, yeah, guys, I mean, so anyway, so let me call it a day here. Um, it's been really great chatting with you guys. Can you create a liaison? We just learned about finches and the Galapagos Islands. I know, I know. Not about his, about how he enabled murder and enabled some crazy ideological movements like the Marxists, the Nazis, the Soviets, okay, and how, how they were using his principles to murder people and he caused more than one genocide. Darwin inspired more than one massive genocide the man oh my god he's the inspiration for murder right he might have been the guy that that physically did the murder but he certainly inspired it and enabled it um it's not secret that atheism and dialectical materialism well yeah so uh were the officials of the soviet union i knew the media was lying after the cbs series on vietnam atrocities back in the 80s now I realize they're in it with the elites in academia. Yeah. Michelle says, very good presentation. We need to question everything we've been taught. Thank you and God bless. Yeah, let's kill our babies because the finches changed their beaks. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Um, I'm glad I found the channel, Pedro. Thank you, Pedro. And uh, yeah, so, but yeah, the part of the reason I'm tired is I sit up here late and I'm, you know, just, sometimes I got to take a walk. I got to get up and go outside and take a walk because this stuff, I, I can't explain to you how angry it makes me, how sick and disgusting and vile it is. But hopefully I've made sense. Hopefully everything I say is is rational, right? This provides another perspective on this. So guys, let me get out of here. So have a wonderful night. Take care all. God bless.